Welcome aboard, everyone, to Train Tuesday. I am your host, Jim Wigan, with Atherin Trains, and so glad to have you on board. If you are catching us live, uh, thank you. Uh, reminder, this is one of our last lives for the season. Um, coming up in May um, through October, these will be pre-recorded, and they'll just drop automatically every Tuesday in our YouTube channel. However, we still have a few more lives left, so if you are catching us live, thank you for joining us. And if you're catching us on YouTube after the fact, thank you for finding us there. And if you like the content that you see on our YouTube channel, please do us a favor and like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way, every time a new video comes on board, you're the first to see it. So let's see who's joining us tonight. I see Harold, Dark Paw the Wolf, Charles, Edward Rail Productions, Jason, Brody, Grandpa Rails, DG Model Works is in the house, Ian Frost, Anthony, Roger, Alco Steam, Mark, Are You a Train Man Too, David, Charles, Ronald, and Alex, just to name a few. So we're going to talk about one scale tonight. It's going to be HO scale, so sorry on scale, guys. Um, your, your day will come. But we're going to be talking HO scale, but we're going to be talking from Atherin Genesis, Atherin and then Atherin Roundhouse. So all of our three major brands are represented here on this program. We're gonna be talking locomotives and freight cars. And they're pretty much from all kinds of different eras. We're gonna talk about modern first, and we're gonna talk about the per diem era, 1970s into the 80s. And then we're gonna finish up the program with Roundhouse, and talking about how grain was moved before covered hoppers. So one more time, let's see who is joining us out there online. I see Ben's Trains, Russ, Ronald, Donnie has joined us, Harold, KCG, Rail Gilbert, Sid, and Butch, just to name a few. So thank you once again for joining us again. Remember, um, after next week, I think, is our last live uh, Train Tuesday until uh, October. So Get online and say hi while you can. Now, keep in mind, too, we are going to be doing the uh, um, Atherin Extras. Those will always be live, so there'll still be an opportunity for you to interact with us at Atherin. So let's get started. We're going to start talking about the Dash 9s first tonight. And I'm using this example here as... One that we released previously, because the details are generally the same, but it's always good to have an actual picture of the model um, to represent what we're going to be showing. Now, a little bit of insider information on this. We technically announced these Arizona and California locomotives back in December of 2023. However, as we were going to print with the packet that your dealer gets, some new information had surfaced and we quickly tried to get some artwork done to represent uh, what we had found out but we just didn't have enough time to get it out there so rather than just drop those locomotives we've extended the pre-order window on these locomotives so technically not a new announcement however um, you're going to put it in the forefront of your mind so that you can pre-order these before friday April 26, and this new artwork is going to be included. So let's go ahead and check out what we're talking about. So the Arizona and California acquired several former BNSF Dash 9s back in 2022, the most powerful units on their roster. So therefore, Arizona and California numbered them in the 4400 series to reflect this. Now, Painted for the Arizona and California, originally announced in December 2023, we are now extending the pre-order on these models that you see here, now with updated artwork. And let's talk about this. And you'll see why we kind of had to extend this, because we had to, A, get the additional um, research done to put the uh, logos and other artwork associated with these locomotives on. And also, since they um, some of them are Operation Lifesaver, that did require some licensing. So the first locomotives that you see here, these are both former BNSF locomotives. The first one that you see at the top of your screen 
is Arizona and California at number 4,400. Now this is former BNSF 4534. You'll notice that while it does have the Genesee and Wyoming corporate paint scheme, it doesn't have any heralds. It still has its large dome antenna, exhaust stack cover is still installed. That's about it. And this is how we originally saw these units when our product developers were doing the research on them. Likewise, 4403, this is BNSF or former BNSF 4527. It too has the corporate paint scheme, however, no heralds, and it has a large dome antenna. Now, moving to the next two units, things get even more interesting. Somewhere around 2023, which we believe was late 2023, certain locomotives were painted and had the corporate logos applied, and in some cases, the um, Operation Lifesaver. If you look at the top of your screen, you'll see Arizona and California 4401. Now, this is former BNSF 4577. Now, Arizona, California Railroad and Operation Lifesaver Heralds have been added to this paint scheme. You'll also notice that they have the skate style antennas in addition to the large antenna dome. And if you look carefully, you'll actually see a Canadian national uh, air conditioner uh, where an orange one would normally reside. The exhaust stack cover is also installed on this unit. Again, this is former BNSF 4577. Stablemate BNSF 4846 is now shown here as Arizona, California 4402. It too has both the Arizona, California Railroad logo as well as the Operation Lifesaver Heralds added to it. It too will have the skate style antennas in addition to the large antenna dome and the exhaust stack cover is installed. So all four of these units are being offered as they appeared from 2022 to 2023. There's a little bit of elasticity to this era. We believe that most of these locomotives received their logos like you see here um, in the later part of 2023. Now, some of the features of these Arizona and California locomotives, again, I'm gonna go back to the Southern Pacific locomotive because I think um, for you guys to see the actual details of the model, even though it's a different model, is a little bit more helpful sometimes than just a one dimensional line art drawing. So these are all, like I was saying, former BNSF units. These were acquired in 2022. Now the details will match the BNSF 4300 series class. They will have PTC antennas and they are officially licensed by Operation Lifesaver. So a couple of important things to remember there. The details are pretty much going to match the original BNSF ownership. And in 2022, they would roam their territory with or without those logos, depending on what you see here. And then later in 2023, not only would they inherit their corporate logos, but they would get the Operation Lifesaver logos as well. So again, you've got until Friday, April 26th to place your pre-orders on the Arizona, California. Like I said, we advertised it a little bit back in December, but we didn't have all the artwork. And so a lot of folks probably didn't know exactly what they were pre-ordering. This should help um, solidify any questions you may have. And of course, you can always go to atherin.com to the new announcements tab and download the PDF that's available there. All right, I'm going to take a little bit of time to see if anybody else has some questions on these Dash 9s before going on to our next item. Um, any questions that have to do with shows or anything like that, feel free to ask those after the end of the program. Right now, I'm just looking for questions on the Dash 9s. Let's see, it looks like most people are pretty happy with those. Like I said, we we had these announced back in December, but now we've actually got the updated artwork. So make it a little bit easier to know what you're ordering. All right, so there's the modern day. Let's go to the 1970s. Now the 1970s were known for a lot of things discos, 
um, smaller cars that were supposed to be better on gas and some things we'd rather forget about. If you're a modeler like me, shag carpet really is one of those things we would really like to forget. Makes me wonder how many of those coupler springs from number five KD couplers are still in shag carpet somewhere. So the 1970s, of course, was the boom of the per diem boxcar. And one of the nice things about the per diem boom was small, very small short lines. In some cases, short lines that only had a small stretch of track now had the ability to get boxcars with their name and paint schemes on them. Now, where this is important for a modeler of the 1970s into the 1980s is it really allowed us to have a wide range of colors and railroads on our on our property. It wasn't unusual to see a car that was typically a railroad of northern New England and southern California or vice versa. And so it's a very important, interesting time of modeling. And of course, what many would consider to be the last great breath of box cars before other types of freight cars would take over. Now the car that you see on your screen here, this is from a previous release. Again, used just to as an example to show you some of the details. Now let's talk about what we're going to have open for pre-orders until next Friday the 26th. So at first glance, you're thinking, great, another Rock Island car. You'd be half correct. After the Rock Island went bankrupt and subsequently was gone by March of 1980, the Rock Island had purchased a lot of these PS 5344 boxcars. As such, they became pretty much available on the used market, and Chicago Northwestern was one of those buyers. Chicago Northwestern uh, ended up buying a fleet of these, a small fleet of these, and they could be seen throughout the Midwest and further in the 1980s. Now, all the cars that we're going to talk about tonight are offered with three different road numbers. Those road numbers um, again, are going to be distinctive so that you have the option to pick up three cars, same railroad, but with different road numbers. The one that you see on your screen here is Chicago Northwestern 718258. Additionally, we're going to offer car numbers 718340 as well as 718461. Coming up next is another car, and a car that I saw a lot back um, in my younger days, but the Ann Arbor. This is a 1979 era car. Now, when we think about Conrail, we typically think about the Northeast. We don't really think about what kind of changes it brought to the upper Great Lakes and Midwest regions. And the Ann Arbor is one of those areas. Ann Arbor was a railroad that was around for many, many years until about 1976. Now, Conrail did pick it up after. Um, that. This was another one of those railroads that um, was taken over by Conrail. Later, much later, the Ann Arbor would come back as a small short line. In fact, it does exist now. If you do a quick search online, you'll see some information about the modern day Ann Arbor. But this is 1970s era, and we're offering three different road numbers on this specific railroad. The one that you see on your screen now is 5186. And of course, the reporting marks for Ann Arbor are just simply AA. Two different or two additional boxcars will be added to the Ann Arbor roster, 5192 and 5193. 1978 brings us to the Arkansas, Louisiana, and Mississippi. Again, another very small railroad that took part of the per diem um, boxcar craze of the 1970s. Now their reporting marks are ALM and this is car number 1511. Additionally, we'll offer car numbers 1527 and 1560. Next, also in the same era, 1979, is the Corinth and Counts Railway. Now music lovers will love their reporting marks as I do. CCR is their reporting marks, and 6713 is the car that you see on your screen here. Additionally, we'll offer car numbers 6727 and 6724. And then finally, bringing up the end of our per diem cars. We're sticking right to 1978 with these. The first one, Lenawee County. 
Their reporting marks were LCRC, and this is car number 1003. Additionally, we'll offer car numbers 1005 as well as 1010. And then finally, Michigan fans, you'll be happy to see that we're going to offer the Upper Marion and Plymouth. This is a 1978 uh, era car. Their reporting marks are UMP. The car that you see on your screen here is 1002. We'll also feature uh, car numbers 1023 and 1046. Now let's talk a little bit about the features there. Again, we're going to use our Rock Island car from the previous run as an example. So now these are Ather and HO scale cars. So they will have separately applied wire grab irons, separately applied brake wheels and end ladders, etched end platforms, of course, machined 33 inch solid nickel silver RP25 profile wheels. They're going to be weighted for optimum performance. And the minimum radius on these cars is 18 inches. So again, if you're modeling the 1970s into the 1980s, and maybe even justifiably the 1990s with a little bit of um, decal work and some weathering, you can definitely justify picking these cars up. All right, so let's see if anybody's got questions about these per diem era boxcars. One of my favorite times, one of the reasons why I chose the 1970s for my modeling era, because it was such a colorful time. Let's see, requests for new locomotives and boxcars and things of that nature. Um, remember that we have a product um, suggestion email. That's athern-productsuggestions at athern.com. Let's see. Reminds me too, um, for our viewers in the Galesburg area, be careful. There is some rather stormy looking uh, clouds up that way. I know some, some of you up that way have uh, been commenting there could be some could be some storm situation, so be safe up there. All right, don't see any real questions. I will grab Alco Steam for this. I guess no undecorated. No, not in this run. Now we will offer undecorated cars now and then, but we typically do not run undecorated with every single run. Um, we have not seen the demand to justify that yet. So if we start seeing a, a demand where we're selling a lot more undecorated than we did say last year or the year before, we may start adding it. We have started adding some undecorated locomotives and freight cars. Um, like this month, we're offering undecorated N-scale CA-11 cabooses. Um, but that is all based on sales. No three packs on these. These are all single, um, single releases. However, they're going to have three distinct different uh, road numbers. So you can buy all three and um, not have to worry about duplicates. Not in this run, David. No data only. All right. No Penn Central boxcars in this run either, but maybe in a future run. All right, now let's talk about Roundhouse. And a car that we haven't really offered in quite a while, in fact, a very long time. I don't even remember when these were offered last. Um, but these are grain cars, believe it or not. These are Athern Roundhouse 40-foot grain boxcars. Now, boxcars were the freight car of choice for grain transportation from the early 1900s until they were replaced by covered hoppers beginning in the 1970s. In the 1950s and 60s, before grain hoppers were used, railroads used 40-foot boxcars to haul grain. Many of these 40-foot grain loading boxcars lasted well into the 1980s and 90s, which is pretty interesting. 
actually not too far from where I'm sitting is the local town grain elevator here in Illinois. And there are pictures down at the uh, office of 40 foot box cars getting filled with grain. I'm assuming those pictures are probably from the fifties to early sixties since they're black and white. But yes, at one time, uh, many railroads would use their 40 foot box cars and use them for grain service. And this, it's an interesting industry. If you want to read more about it, Combuck actually has a book on modeling the grain industry, and they talk about 40-foot boxcars um, in a couple of chapters. So with that interesting background being said, let's see what we're offering in this run. Now, everything that we're offering in this run is 1960s era. Now, these are roundhouse, so um, since they are roundhouse, they're going to have molded-on details. We'll talk a little bit about those details in a moment. So coming up first, we've got Santa Fe. And again, keep in mind, these are all 1960s era. We're offering three different road numbers per railroad. So Santa Fe gets, as you see here, 21845. We're also going to offer two additional cars for the Santa Fe name. That's 21852 and 21857. Likewise, we're also going to offer Union Pacific, as seen here. This is car number 113133. Additionally, two other single cars will be offered, 113135 and 113137. Going back before the days of the Burlington Northern, we've got both the Northern Pacific and the Great Northern. These colorful cars will be offered as well in three different road numbers each. Northern Pacific at the top of your screen there is 8130, and we're also going to offer car numbers 8437 and 8455. Likewise, Great Northern, you can see car number 6802 on your screen. We're going to offer car numbers 6815 and 6877. For our friends north of the United States border, we have not forgotten you. We've got the Canadian Pacific. This car is car number 143117. Additionally, two other road numbers will be offered, 143134 and 143207. And like I always say, trigger alert, the Sioux line is part of our legendary liveries. No, Sioux line never had anything quite like this. However, we thought it'd be kind of neat if they had made a 40-foot grain boxcar like this. Very colorful pure fantasy, but as part of our legendary liveries, and since it's in the roundhouse line, we thought, why not? So here you see Sioux Line car number 48356. We'll also offer car numbers 48361 and 48377. Now let's go back to our example to talk a little bit about the features and details of these cars. Now these will have a separately applied brake wheel. They will include machine metal wheels with RP24 or 25 contours. Of course, they're going to be weighted for optimum performance. These will also have body mounted McHenry operating scale knuckle couplers. They are highly detailed, they injected molded bodies. And of course, every effort has been made to make them painted and printed for realistic uh, duplication. That being said, not the Sioux line car because that is a legendary livery. Now, believe it or not, the minimum radius on these cars is 15 inches. So the smallest of small layouts can enjoy these cars. And if you're modeling the 1960s era, just before the covered hoppers really started to come around to the grain elevators, these are the perfect cars to add to your fleet. So with that, Let's see if there's any questions on the 40 foot grain cars by Roundhouse. BNSF 9708 says, Sioux line is cool. Definitely. You're not alone. Terry Peterson says the same thing. Great call on the Sioux line. So yeah, they never happened. They, they were not like that. Um, but kind of neat. 
Here's some information for um, our friends up north. The last shipments of grain by 40-foot boxcars in Canada were in December 1996. That's pretty cool. One of the things you got to remember when you're modeling is check the prototypes. If you're modeling a prototype, you really want to check because what may have been abandoned or not used on some railroads may not hold true for you. Again, most covered hoppers for grain service started entering service in the mid-1960s. By the 1970s, there was definitely a shift to covered hoppers. However, they weren't totally abandoned, as St. Crow has just pointed out, up to 1996. So really interesting. So here's a question for um, our audience. How were the grain cars unloaded? Well, briefly, I am definitely not an expert on this, but from what I've read, what they would normally do, these cars typically would have their sliding doors adjusted or removed, and a piece of material was put on the sides of these cars. It would allow an auger to actually blow the grain inside the um, freight car. When it came time to unload it, it was pretty much a pretty manual intensive labor process. Um, workers at the grain mill or wherever the final destination was simply shoveled that grain out. Um, as you can see, that's why the covered hoppers made such more sense because unloading and loading was so much easier. The manpower wasn't as uh, extensive as it was with these boxcars. Split Rock has a great detail as to why these uh, lasted so long. He said so many 40-foot boxcars lived out their last day as grain cars on branch lines where covered hoppers were too heavy. That's a great point. Covered hoppers were heavier than your standard 40-foot boxcars. As such, branch lines and smaller lines with lighter rail couldn't handle that kind of weight. So um, I believe the Milwaukee Road was one of those roads that use these for quite a few years. Let's see what else we've got. Donnie says, growing up, I used to see Mopac grain cars in the 1970s. Yep, I believe it. So you're going to go back a little bit and see if there are any questions while I was talking. Alcohol Steam with one of the many uh, ways that they could do this. They nailed, um, it was basically wood covered with cardboard over the bottom half inch or so, the door opening, then filled the car and shut the doors. Yeah, again, if you look at the Kambach book, they actually show you how they did, did that. It was a pretty interesting process. Loading the cars was a little bit easier if you had the grain auger. Um, getting it to its destination, some cars were retrofitted with bottom uh, opening doors. Um, most, though, however, you know, just open those um, doors up and let the grain fall into the, um, uh, the bit that would send it to the auger into the grain elevator, and it was swept out. And as somebody else mentioned, uh, sometimes they would have visitors in there. Uh, rodents used to love these cars. All right. Well, with that being said, I'm going to let some uh, time set some time aside for any general questions you have. Um, let's see. One of the questions I saw earlier wanted to know if I was going to the St. Louis RPM meet. Yes, I will be at the St. Louis RPM meet. Um, that's coming up in July. Um, one of the reasons why Atherin Train Tuesdays takes a break from its live schedule throughout the summer is just because a you're busy. Um, you're probably enjoying the warmer weather, maybe getting some rail fanning in, going to a lot of the train shows. And, of course, Atherton is busy. We're going to be doing some shows. We're going to be doing some live feeds. And so remember, the first Train Tuesday in May will be pre-recorded. Those are just going to automatically drop into our YouTube channel. 
All right. Let's see what other questions we have there. Any updates on the RX 500s? No updates as of the last time we briefly talked about it. Um, I know product development has got a lot of the drawings done. I don't know if they've cut the tooling on that yet, but they are working on going back and forth with our factory, making sure everything works correctly. There's a lot going on in that little tiny locomotive. And uh, so as soon as we have some updates, we'll let you know. No updates on the coil cars that I have as of yet. Um, let's see. Jake says, now that we've got four in service, I think it's time Atherin does P42s in phase seven and maybe some 50 foot PS5277 waffle sided boxcars. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. You never know what we're up to. Let's see what else we've got. Jim, have you guys thought about doing track mobiles? Yes, we have. We have thought about that. Um, currently, we've got enough things on our plate, at least product development does, but it is something that comes up in conversations. Um, don't have an update as when we would be doing anything like that, but watch our social media and uh, any announcements will be made there. Our goal is to someday be doing some of those tier four GEs. Um, we've got some other projects in the works right now that we want to get finished up and sent out there. We've got some big releases um, coming up this year. So we want to clear off our plate with those. And then um, looking down the road, yeah, we'll probably go ahead and do those. Benjamin um, helping me out here. Guide to Industry Series, The Model Railroader's Guide to Grain by Jeff Wilson. Great book. If you don't have that book, I highly suggest you purchase it. It's a really great book um, going into great detail about how the grain industry worked and how it continues to work. EL3672 says, hey, Jim, need the ELGP7GYM Former Erie Freight Locos with 800-gallon fuel tanks. Please, 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 please. Well, do me a favor. Um, go to our website. Go to our Contact Us tab, and there is a drop-down menu for product suggestions, or simply go to athern-productsuggestions at athern.com and put your suggestions in there. Now, one thing that I will say, and I continue to repeat because a lot of folks don't hear about it until later, is they think – that if you send in an email with a request that by the next announcement you're going to get your request now in an ideal world that would be great if i was able to go to the athern product suggestion email and say i want a mcginnis gp9 boston and maine in prime for grime that i should get it in the next announcement but that's not what's going to happen Basically, what happens with all those suggestions is we look at those suggestions and we see the most popular ones. They're categorized, they're, they're set aside. And so the next time a model is going to be chosen for um, a re-release, we'll look at it. In this case, we'll say GP9. And if there's enough people like me asking for Prime for Grime McGinnis um, GP9s, then we'll probably do them. So don't think that just because you get that product suggestion email, it guarantees that your locomotive or your model is going to get built. And also, please don't think that you're going to get a response right away. That's pretty much a collection for us. I've had some people complain to me at shows saying that I've used the product suggestion email, but nobody responds to me. And that's because it goes right to product development where it's filed. Our product development guys, trust me, are super busy right now with a bunch of projects. And so they may not always get back to you. So don't be offended if they don't um, strike up a conversation with you. 
let's see what other questions we've got, and then I'm going to let you guys get back to some modeling. Any requests? Um, I'm not going to answer those. Those can go right to product, uh, product suggestions. Jason says, I'm going to get those rock boxcars and put my Truesville Southern marks over the CNW marks. Hey, it's plausible. If your railroad was available during that fire sale, then you can definitely do that. Canadian Locomotive Logistics, I believe you and I have had this conversation before. Um, even an automated response would be better than nothing. Understood. Um, we have tried our best, though, to let everybody know that that's not a two-way conversation. It's basically a cataloging of what people want. And since we are a business, now I always say that um, Atherton is made up of mainly model railroaders, but you still need to keep in mind that we have to pay for the lights and the bills and everything else. So if one person has one request for a locomotive, and it doesn't make the cut over the 700 requests for another locomotive. It's simply a matter of business. Um, we will have our web team look into an automated response in the future, but for right now, just keep in mind that that is just a um, catalog. All right, one or two more questions, and then I'm going to let you guys get back to it. If you are joining us late, remember May 1st or the start of May, Train Tuesdays will be um, pre-recorded. They'll drop automatically into our YouTube channel on Tuesdays. And then back um, going to October, we'll go back to the live sessions. We did that because we've looked at the analytics. There's more viewers in the fall and winter months than the spring and summer months, plus um, We've got a lot going on in the background that you may not be aware of. Let's see. Yep, you are very welcome. Again, if it hadn't been clear before, um, Canadian Lo Locomotive Logistics, I do believe um, our web team is going to be putting a response in there, just so you know. Do the product team look at these live streams for suggestions? Not always. Once in a while, Janik will be in there. Janik will sneak in here, and he'll answer questions for me. Sometimes John will. But for the most part, our product developers are nose to the grindstone. Um, frankly, I don't know how our product developers um, <laughs> stay sane sometimes. They are super busy. I wish I could tell you some of the things that are going on behind closed doors right now because there are some major projects that product development's been working on that I'm really excited about, and you'll see. Sometimes they'll, they'll see things, but really the number one source really is the product suggestion email. All right. Well, it looks good. It looks like everybody's had most of their questions um, answered again. Everything that I talked about here tonight is available for pre-order through your Atherin dealer. Um, you've got till Friday, April 26, which it doesn't seem like April's already half over. I'm not sure where this year is going. Um, hopefully, it's going well for you, and hopefully, uh, you're having a great year. Hopefully you're getting some great modeling done. I know I'm hoping to uh, get some work done on both my N-Scale and HO-Scale layouts this year. So until I talk to you next time, which next Tuesday, our last live uh, until October, I want everyone out there to be happy, be healthy, be safe, do some good modeling, and above all, high greens. Take care, everyone.